Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking this on a road trip to get parts for this. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you're new to the channel, I wanna say thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't done so yet, please go ahead and consider clicking on that red subscribe button and turning it gray because we are trying to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. As of the recording of this video, we're only about 130 something uh, subscribers away from that 5,000 subscriber mark. And when I do, I'm gonna release a video of blowing up two cars with Tannerite. And uh, so that's something that a lot of people who have been subscribers for a long time are waiting for. So I hope that you'll uh, join in and be a part of the old car guy family. Some of the cars that we do feature is my 1979 Chrysler Cordoba, which is kind of buried in stuff right now. We've got Grandma, which is my 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis. We've got Dale, the 77 Chevy Scottsdale C10. And of course, we've also got Blackjack, which is my lifted 2003 Grand Marquis. Which brings me to the topic of discussion um, before we talk about the accessory that we went uh, on a little road trip to pick up today. And that is the future of Blackjack and what we actually want to do with it and what we want to accomplish with it. Now, my most popular video on YouTube is this one right up here. And what I talked about in that video was the idea of performance mods on old grandma here. And by what I mean by performance mods was maybe a turbo or forced induction of some sort. We've never done it, but grandma is such a nice car that I just can't bring myself to put that kind of modification on the car. I just want to enjoy it the way she is without risk of blowing up the motor. Blackjack on the other hand? I really don't care. Um, the motors are abundant enough that if something happened to it, yes, I could replace it. Again, with Grandma, I'm just not prepared to do that. That's why we bought Blackjack, was just something that we could beat on and horse around with. So one of the things that I really would like to be able to do is find out the least expensive method of forced induction um, that we could install that we wouldn't have to do a lot of modifications. And by what I mean by that, well, let's pop the hood and take a look. So one thing that we've got working against us is hood clearance. If I can help it, I don't want to have to cut into the hood. Now, granted, we are looking at grandma here, but underneath the hood is gonna be identical to uh, blackjack. So uh, we do have a little bit of room over here in this fender well and a little bit less room over here because we've got our air conditioning. Uh, battery sits right here, so it's taking up a fair amount of room. Uh, but one thing that we do have is we have a ton of room between the radiator and the grill. So there's lots of room in here for something. So that's something to consider. But what I would like to see is I'd like to see maybe a supercharger because they're clean they don't take up a lot of room. They may come up a little bit higher, but like I said, if I had to cut the hood, I'll do it. But I totally want it to be a little bit of a sleeper. Having said that, a 2003 Grand Marquis lifted five inches in the air is not a sleeper. It draws a lot of attention. Anyway, so back to this, I think one of the things that uh, you know we could consider is taking advantage of this space over here on the driver's side. Uh, we could also take advantage of some space right up here where the air filter goes. Um, a Pro Charger could bolt on, but we've got the ABS module uh, or, or uh, distribution thingy over here, so that might be in the way. But I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my mind that if I could find myself an old uh, supercharger off of a Mustang or something like that, that we can fit the belly pan in, um, the intercooler and all that stuff on the top, then it's just a matter of kind of plumbing things into the throttle body and away you go. But as I have said in the past, all these things, forced induction is expensive. When you want to add extra power to a vehicle, power, horsepower, gets expensive. Um, when it comes to blackjack, I'm not afraid to go that route, 
But I've also got to keep in mind that YouTube isn't paying me a whole lot of money right now, and it would take several months of saving that YouTube ad revenue um, that comes courteous of you guys watching those ads that we could do something as such. I don't mind throwing a little bit of my own money towards it, but at this point, Blackjack is basically paying for itself. Now, when I say it's paying for itself, as you guys know, I only bought this car for 900 bucks. I'm gonna put that video right up here. So, other than the $60 tow to get it back to the shop, because when I bought it, it wouldn't start, it had the Mustang wheels and tires on it. So I was able to sell those this week and I got 400 bucks. So 900 plus 400, we're at $500 net right now. And the rally wheels and tires that I was contemplating selling off of Dale the truck here, I finally said it's time to put those up on the buy and sell. Um, and so I did, I got another 400 bucks out of that. So right now we're net uh, $100 in the hole on Project Blackjack and well, I spent another $120 on it today. So let's get in to the topic of today's video and see what we bought for Project Blackjack. So as you can see, this is a roof rack and this is apparently supposed to be a Thule roof rack. I question that because it's got some pretty uh, bad welds on it, but nevertheless, uh, this rack or this basket is something that we're going to attach to the roof of Blackjack That's going to give us a spot to store our spare tire and Possibly add some redneck lights to the front back and sides So this thing came with the roof racks that fit on a Subaru uh, So let's take a look and see what we're gonna have to do to modify it to get it to fit on Blackjack Well, I think it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get these specific roof racks to work because they're meant to fit on factory roof racks. And of course, this car has no roof racks. But I can go to Princess Auto, which is like Canada's Harbor Freight, and I can buy some universal ones pretty cheap. That What they do is they kind of clamp uh, into the rain gutter here, uh, front and back, and then we just center that up onto the roof. But that's kind of the plan. Is to get that on there and then we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with the spare tire and get that up on the car so guys tell me what you guys think about forced induction on blackjack as well as what you think of this roof rack and uh, whether we're going too far or if it's something that's going to add to the what the heck are you doing to that car aspect so anyways um, that's the plan this is what we're going for we are going to run some lights on it eventually so again let me know what you think down in the comment section and uh, tell me have we gone too far or have we gone far enough yet so while I was uh, putting that rack away I had an idea I'm thinking what if I could make a bracket to mount those bars on and either bolt them through the roof or even weld them to the roof I mean it is just a beater car. I don't have to be real fancy. So anyways, we're out here at the shop. We're going to see if we can find some uh, some uh, square tubing and uh, maybe make a couple of brackets to lift that up and some flat plate to either screw it down or to weld it down to the roof. Um, it's not going to take a whole lot, maybe just a couple of uh, tack welds and then we'll kind of clean it up, paint it to uh, match the rest of the car. So let's see if we can find some metal to uh, make those brackets with. Well, as luck would have it, I found these in the junk pile that looks like it used to be roof racks of some sort that uh, got these little standoffs in them and the uh, little inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing that if we were to bolt that or weld that right to the roof of the car, then we can set those cross pieces across here. And uh, these ones will obviously have to be cut. And even these ones here, we can cut, uh, cut square so they kind of sit like a regular mount. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna cut those down to fit, and I've got four of them right here. And then all we gotta do is figure out exactly how we're gonna mount it to the roof of the car, 
and uh, and then get this thing put together. I'm going to have to find some U-bolts somewhere to fasten the actual basket itself to the to the uh, rails. So I'll take a run into Canadian Tire and see if they've got some small inch and a half um, U-bolts. If not, I've got some muffler clamps here. I'm sure we can probably make work. So let's get these over to the cutoff disc and get them cut. So the first thing we got to do before we go over to the cutoff uh, disc is we got to get these um, chains off with these little lock pins. Those won't turn out. They're rusted inside there, so we're going to use the, the uh, little angle grinder to cut those off. Let's get that done first. Need some hair. This is going to be fun. I can just tell. We may end up having to use the angle grinder the whole way around because when I pull this down, it's hitting on that and it won't go any further than that right there. So, yeah, we're going to have to do it the slow way, I guess. Dang it. We'll try the reset first and see if that helps, if it makes too much of a mess or if it's slow going. Uh, we'll decide from there. Let's go get the reciprocating saw. Lower than that. Still too slow, but one down, three to go. Okay guys, mama's calling for supper, but we did get those ends cut off. And as you can see, they look a little more uniform now than they did before. These ones were a little bit longer, but hey, I'm not going for uh, looks here. Uh, I'm going for function at this point, so these will work. Lifting that rack up off the roof of the car. And tomorrow, we'll get the car inside the shop here and uh, get things mocked up and figure out exactly where we're going to mount it and how we're going to secure it to the roof of the car. So uh, when you guys pick this up, you're not going to pick it up. I'm picking it up. I'm not even picking it up. What am I doing? So I'll be right back, it'll be tomorrow, and we'll get this thing buttoned up, attached to the roof of Blackjack. All right guys, it's day two, we're back here on Sunday morning, and we're getting ready to get this roof rack mounted onto the pieces that we fabricated yesterday. And we've gotta figure out where they're gonna go and exactly how we're gonna mount them. Let's take a look and see where we are so far. So we've got these mounts all cut up, and we're gonna have to take a few measurements and figure out A, how we're gonna get this bar attached to the standoffs because this is all like plastic coated so we may end up having to scrape off some plastic and it's, it is steel underneath and weld it to the uh, standoffs 
front and back, but we're gonna have to take some measurements first because I think what we're gonna have to do is get these bars attached to these rungs so we know exactly where they're gonna be attached to. Uh, so there'll likely be one here and then one on that bottom one here. Then we can set it up, place our standoffs and mark the roof as to where we're gonna mount them. And then we'll figure out just exactly where or how uh, we'll mount those to the roof. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I may take a run into Canadian Tire and see if they've got those little rubber grommets uh, that are threaded on the inside. That way we can drill a hole and bolt it down with some washers and just kind of seal up that hole with some silicone and be done with it. That way we know it's not gonna leak. So in the meantime, let's get these bars attached to the rack and then get the rack up onto the car and take uh, some measurements. Okay, so what we were able to do is we were able to get the bars fastened to the basket using these muffler clamps. And then I took the brackets that I cut yesterday and I've just got them zip tied, just kind of hold them in place on each of the four corners of the basket. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully lift the basket up onto the roof, find the placement that we think looks the best, and then we can start marking the roof as to where these four holes line up as well as I'm gonna outline the edges of the bracket in case I decide I just wanna kinda of scuff it up and tack a weld onto it. So we've got our measurement from here to here, pretty much down exactly where it needs to go. So I'm gonna mark it this way. Then we've got to measure from the top of the windshield to the top of the bracket here and see if we're the same distance back this way. So let's do that. I think that'll do it that way. So let's get a side profile, see if that's where we want it or we want it to come ahead a little bit further. So there it sits pretty much in the middle of the roof, but does it look right? Should it be forward more this way? Should it be back more? I'm looking at the sloped end of it and maybe that sloped end has to come closer to the windshield to kind of make it look like something. Let's mark our 13 and three quarter the way it is right now. Then we'll slide it up maybe that, I don't know, that five or six inches on the front and see what happens there. So I tried moving it ahead quite a bit further and it was too far. So this is about three more inches than where we had it the first time. And I'm almost thinking that we're gonna take that little wind deflector off because it doesn't match the slope of the windshield. If we come up the windshield, it's gonna kind of match the slope of the basket just fine. And as we can see, we're not touching the roof. So these standoffs are perfect height. Now over here, we're lifted a bit off the roof. And the reason for that is is because that standoff on that corner is kind of cockeyed on the actual cross piece. So we're gonna have to fix that so it sits flat when we do it, this one should come down. So I think that's where we wanna put it. It seems to be more centered maybe, or at least it looks all right. So this is what we're gonna go with. We'll make those marks, we'll fix that back standoff. Let's check the side to side to make sure that we're still good from the front. I think that's just about perfect. The center pin looks like it's coming right down center with the uh, rear view mirror of the windshield. I think that's perfect. Let's start making those marks and getting ready to uh, figure out how we're actually going to fasten it down. All right, so we've got our marks made out on all four corners here. I did make a quick trip into Canadian Tire to see if they had anything like a riv nut, uh, which would be perfect if I had some of those, just to be able to drill some holes, put those rubberized things in there and you know, kind of screw it in, tighten it up and it locks itself into place. But I don't have any, so I think what we're left with is we're left with welding the thing to the roof. Some of you guys are gonna shake your head and say, what the heck is he doing welding? to sheet metal on the roof of his car. Again, I'm not really concerned with how it gets on there as long as it is secure. And I think just, you know, tack welding it on two or three places around each uh, standoff is just gonna be exactly 
uh, what we'll need to do. And then we can go and we can kind of spray it and uh, keep it from rusting after that. Um, as far as the actual standoffs themselves, obviously we cannot keep uh, the zip ties there from holding it in place. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take these off, grind off some of this plastic shielding that's on this cross piece, and then we can actually go ahead and uh, kind of tack those in place on those sides. That way, those standoffs become a part of the crossbar. Once we have that done, then it's a matter of cleaning up these standoffs and getting everything positioned into place and getting it kind of tacked up into place. So we're gonna play with that for a little bit here, try and get this, um, you know, the, the logistics of everything kind of put into place and try and make this work. So having said that, let's get these standoffs mounted to these cross braces. She's a little dirty on this side, but it'll do. It'll do, pig. So we've got it welded on there pretty securely, I think. Um, it doesn't take much, it's not gonna need much, but nevertheless, we'll let that cool down. We'll go around and do all the other sides here, and then we'll come back and we'll touch that up with some spray bomb and uh, keep that from rusting over time. So let's get to work at the other three corners. All right, so we've got all four corners welded up. Um, I did manage to find some uh, weld through zinc coating. Um, it's like a primer that we can kind of weld through. So once we get it up on the roof, we'll be able to kind of, you know, zzz, zzz, snap it in there. Uh, now comes the fun part, and that's getting this back up on the roof by myself, getting it lined up, and uh, proceeding to give this thing a little uh, tack through on the, uh, on the roof. That'll be fun. So as of right now, I think we're committed to welding these things into place. I've uh, grinded out a little bear patch here on the front and back. I'll do the same on that side. We'll get these tacked into place. Hopefully they hold. I mean, sheet metal is gonna flex and warp and this and that, but I'm hoping that once we get it on here, tacked all the way around, get the basket down, it'll give it some rigidity. And quite frankly, all eight welds, so two on each one, would have to give up in order for this thing to come off. And I have the utmost faith in my welding ability, so <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> oh. Or do I? Well, I wasn't expecting there to be that much smoke on the inside. But there seems like there's a little bit of smoke coming out from uh, under the headliner. I weren't thinking about that. Maybe we should back it outside just in case for a little bit. Probably a good call. All right, well, it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. The car hasn't burnt down yet, so I'm pretty confident that we're safe. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of foam and material up in this headliner. And yeah, seeing how we pretty much got the front done anyways, I just went ahead and took some of this trim off, the uh, holy crap handles and uh, this piece of trim back here on the quarter. And I've got the headliner kind of pressed, uh, uh, pried down with a block of wood to keep it away from the roof so it's not touching so that when we go back here and weld yep we're gonna do it again we should be fine as far as not causing any fire so this time just in case I am gonna leave the door open to the garage and that way when we do start welding on this back bracket that uh, if something does happen we can just kind of shoo the car out real quick like so let's get this thing finished up before I lose battery. All right, so we've got everything all buttoned up. We've got everything fastened to the roof. We've got the roof basket fastened to the brackets that we've welded to the roof. Paint's been touched up. The uh, muffler clamps have been spray painted black, flat black, so they kind of blend in. And everything is done. Let's take a look and see what kind of attitude it's made for Project Blackjack. I think 
that that adds a little bit more redneck to it. And that is the goal. That is what we're doing with this car. We are heading down the redneck path. We've got it lifted. We've got the spray bomb flat black paint. We've now got the roof rack. So when I bought the car, it did not come with a spare tire. So we still have to get one rigged up before we go heading out of town or doing any amount of off-roading shenanigans, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but having said that, this roof rack kind of just sets it up one step closer to the end goal. Once we get the spare tire up there, we will get some uh, redneck Larry lights, we call them. Why do we call them Larry lights? Well, because Larry the cable guy, he's a redneck. And anybody who runs light bars on their car likely is a redneck. So we call them Larry lights around here. Anyways, if you've never heard of that, I'm coining it. So we've got the uh, car all set up. It's sitting in the stance we want. We've got the tires we want. And we've added some extra height to this car as the title of this video says. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little addition to the project and uh, we will be getting to some more here in the very near future. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. We are on our way to 5,000 subscribers and I need you guys to be subscribed obviously to get there. So, the more people who are subscribed, the more views we get to this channel, the more money comes in for the channel that we can put into projects like this. So, give us a like, share with all your friends. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.